elbow tendonitis. So we're going to start with a high muscle resting tone in the forearm flexors and the forearm extensors. Um, we're going to start with a fascial technique just so that we can decrease trigger point activity and help to decrease the pain. So we're going to go into a fascial spread, which is indirect, engaging the fascia, the skin, and the fat. Holding this for 90 seconds. This can be done longer. This is going to increase our extensibility, our joint range of motion. It's going to decrease pain and trigger points. We're going to move from our indirect fascia to our direct fascia. So we're going to take this and just provide a bit of an anchor, placing our palmar surface just proximal to the carpal bones, moving proximally along the tendons and muscles of the extensor group. We want to do this technique for about five seconds or longer. The rate is slow. Engagement is the fascia, the skin, and the fat. We can provide a skin roll working within our client's pain tolerance. You're going to pick up the tissue, elevating it from the tissues below, using your thumbs and fingers, and walk the tissue, lifting up. If you find a point of restriction, try to lift the tissue up together and then provide an S bow or a C bow waiting for a release of the tissue. This is applied for 30 seconds or longer. You can skin roll one time looking for restrictions and then come back and treat those restrictions with more skin rolling in that particular area. Once we have provided our fascial, we're going to go into some neuromuscular techniques. We want to treat both the flexors and the extensors in this condition due to compensatory changes. So I'm going to start with the flexors and the high muscle resting tone. Paying special attention to my pronator teres from its origin and insertion and into the flexors from flexor carpi radialis, flexor digitorum, and flexor ulnaris. including some petrissage around the medial condyle. Moving into my extensors, paying special attention to my supinator. And extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, using circles, finger circles, thumb circles, some stripping techniques, going from origin to insertion, decreasing tone, decreasing pain, and then extensor carpi ulnaris, and extensor digitorum. And I'm going to strip along the muscle of extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, and I'm going to look for trigger points, which will be indicated by a jump sign or recreation of symptoms. Once I've located a trigger point, I'm going to apply ischemic compressions within my client's pain tolerance, 
waiting for a release or a decrease in symptoms. Elbow tendonitis, cross fiber friction. So we're going to cross fiber friction the tendon of extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. So we're going to isolate the tendon and in order to make sure that we're on it, we're going to just ask our client to resist against my pressure on their fingers and relax. And once I have that tendon, I am going to engage that tissue, indicating to my client that this is a more aggressive technique and we want to work within their pain tolerance. I'm going to apply enough pressure on the tendon so that I can isolate it in order to move it against the structures below it. I'm going to support and double stack my limb or my thumb, if that's what I'm using, or I can come in and double stack fingers. Cross fiber is exactly that. I'm going to move across the fiber. My direction is going to be one to two centimeters. It's going to be one to two cycles per second. And I can do this technique for up to two minutes for the first treatment, but if my client has not indicated any decrease in pain, after the two minutes, I'm going to stop the technique. Your body mechanics need to be such so that you can maintain the pressure and the rate. Once I've completed my two minutes, I'm going to gently flush the area and take it into a very slow, gentle, stretch in the muscle, holding the stretch for 30 seconds. In order to increase my joint range of motion, I'm going to take the radiocarpal joint. I can either, either use a towel that's folded up to support under the wrist or a bolster. Placing my client's arm in a pronated position, bringing the wrist up into neutral. My proximal hand is going to support at the styloid process of the radius and the ulna. I'm going to have a gentle grip on the palmar surface of the hand, just distal to that. I'm going to provide a grade one distraction, and then I'm going to do a posterior glide of the radiocarpal joint to increase wrist flexion. It's going to be a grade three sustained, which is going to move from our physiological range into the elastic barrier. Holding this for eight to 10 seconds, and then releasing and applying a grade one distraction, a posterior glide into that elastic barrier, holding for another eight to 10 seconds, and releasing this. I can do this two to three times or until I feel a change in the joint range of motion. We want to ice the area that we've just provided cross fiber friction to. We can do this in two ways. We can take our ice cube in our Dixie cup folding down so we have something to grab onto. Taking a hand towel so that we can wipe up the drips and applying the ice onto the area in a slow moving motion until our client indicates that there is numbness to the area. Wiping up the drips as we go. The faster you move the ice cube, the colder the pain is for the client. The slower you move the ice cube, the more tolerable the technique. Our second option is to use a cold pack, making sure the weight of the cold pack it's not too heavy for the area that we're treating. Ensuring that our cold pack is secure to the area. And we can go on and treat other areas. And I'm going to apply a gentle stretch to the area. Going to isolate it, placing my hand just distal to the second row of carpals, supporting 
under the elbow joint and taking a passive relaxed stretch into wrist flexion. Holding the stretch for 30 seconds. <laughs> 